We just put you on Twitter today. So now you can tweet. <laughs> yeah, how pathetic is that? Yeah. Um, no, I just not, I'm just not getting into the Amber. Building your but brand. But we're building man. David Rodriguez, <laughs> the businessman, David the brand. He gets it. He gets it. Cole, ex- explain to the listeners why you want to have Twitter, especially someone like David Rodriguez. Well, it's not just Twitter. It's all of your digital footprints. I mean, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those things, you want to be able to set your messages up. Uh, you have tons of celebrities out there. If you've got a ton of followers that's on Facebook, you need to send them over to um, to your Twitter account. We did you, that. We I mean, just started you, that today. And be... you know what's crazy is that it's just because I'm a – what happened was is that I have a, a an official – the official David Rodriguez uh, Facebook fan page, right? Yes. And I have everybody on my personal page. So my personal page took off. It exploded. And I have subscribers now and all that. You, and yeah, you reach the maximum. I get to now the point where, like, I don't. I'm not big on that, so I probably should have someone else run it. But I get so I I get all these emails and good emails, hate emails, you know, hate <laughs> mail. <laughs> yeah, and I just have to deal with this. With it. And it, you know, sometimes I just go, man, screw this. I'm getting off it for a while. And I'll, I'll get off Facebook for like two months. Yeah, but think, just, think about this though: your Twitter account and your Facebook, you're promoting your fights. Right. You want it now to create a brand. You want to create products. But see, and but services. right now I'm just what am I doing? Promoting my injuries. No, it's like, you're just, David. Like, I'm just like, hey, I have nothing to talk sorry. about. What you're doing. On the phone yeah, with us is, is Bardia yeah. Garamani, CEO of International Sports Agency. Go. You had a question, Bardia, or a comment? No, I was saying right now what you're doing is you're becoming the people's champion by, yes. by the events that happened to you and in, in my years of doing exactly it with right. Gio and. At the end of the day, you're becoming the people's champion right now. Only if because the people you hear about something it and that could happen about. to me, that could happen to everybody Everyone. in that studio. Wow. You, you, your, your injury, same thing. If you're becoming the people's champion. You're getting yourself out there because the next time you fight, you want everybody to remember that's the guy that suffered two adverse, you know, situations. He he's, I'm, he's I'm overcome adversity. I'm going to respectfully adversity. disagree. You're not, you're not the people's champion. You're not the people's choice if the people don't know who you are and if you're not well, reaching. Of them. course, and Defin- it's your definitely your responsibility. That. Right, you're making yourself the people. You that's what I'm brand. saying. Like you got to build yourself right now to become the people's champion is what I'm referring to. It's never been easier to do that with the social media that's out there. Oh, we, today you don't, you don't need to take out a full-page ad in newspapers throughout the country. For free, you can get your word mm-hmm. out, your message out, and you right. can build a brand if you're smart about it and if you have the, the help that you need to get to, to be your able to do that's, that's what I mean by d- boxing always being in the dark ages. These guys don't know this. You right. said they're, they're the people you're, you're, were antiquated. Well, and, and right. so the, the, the old-time promoters may or may not know. It, it brings to mind the, uh, the book and then the movie Moneyball about right. baseball, right. where you have mm-hmm. the, the old-timers that are sitting around a room and talking about, I don't like that guy. He doesn't look like a ball player. Uh, and and they look at the statistics and they say, but he gets on base, you know, forty two yes. percent of the time. Yes, this guy has a he he walks more than he strikes out, and and he hits with with runners in scoring. Position. And then even the coach didn't want to play him the way he wanted him to, and that's why they weren't getting the numbers they wanted. That's and right. Yeah, and then until later, and, yeah. And the moral of that story was. Uh, the dinosaurs become extinct, and, right. and uh-huh. there are ways to change in this in the boxing game and the boxing business. And it starts with branding yourself, positioning yourself, and you will get that shot. And then you'll make the right. Movement. And when see, that's happens. what's happening now is that I, you know, and I look at this as a very opportune time for me to advance in every aspect of the boxing world because with with the people I'm meeting and the and the the people that are really helping me to get my name out there and 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 doing shows like this, et cetera, even though I've been injured or whatever, it's all helping. It's all helping. It's putting ideas into my mind. Okay, I got to do this next. I got to do that next. I have the energy right now to do it. Like I said, when I go into training camp, things change. I only have energy to train. And so maybe, maybe you know? uh, I mean, if you look for the silver lining in the cloud, the blessing is you now have time to have the clarity right. to look I'll, at where you are and where you want to be and take the, the action steps And it's being, all being brought to my attention. I'm able to, to, to mm-hmm. go ahead. If you have a question for David Rodriguez, <laughs> give us a call at 877-8830-830. You can speak with David Rodriguez now, the one and only, the oh, undefeated no. champion. Undefe- when I tell people you're undefeated, they don't believe me. And I said, no, Google him. And, you know, Google is like... He's a big guy. This is the Bible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get in the ring with him. I know, but he's uh, he's a really cool down-to-earth guy. And I, I keep saying this because he's a man, and it's hard for men to be humble. And I'm, I'm saying this as a female. Um, and he's so humble. He's done uh, so much charity work. Um, and, and when you see, you know, sometimes people do charity work because, oh, I want the fame behind it. He really does it because he loves helping people. You know, it, it's kind of funny. Like, I, I, it took the value away from it when I went to go visit some cancer kids in the hospital. 
and it really cheapened it when the cameras were there. Oh, and I was like, cool. dude, I am not doing a photo op with just to make myself look good. That was in and, Texas. Yeah, uh-huh. and I just I well, I got all the cameras out and I said, dude, you got we can't I can't I can't do this with my mind, w- with my heart like this. I go, you guys just have to leave. Yeah. I can't do this at Goodwill because that oh pose with them and I'm like using the kid as a prop. <laughs> it's right. like, dude, it's crazy. It's like, no, I'm not using it for that. I'm okay. One more picture. Okay, now go. No, no, really, I I couldn't do it, and I just didn't I I didn't feel right about it, and that that to me is like. When I do charity work and stuff like that, I kind of just keep the cameras out of it. And you know, people always tell me, "No, you gotta, you gotta get exposure for that. You gotta show people you're doing that." I understand that, I do, but I have a good heart about that kind of stuff, and I kind of just like to keep it. But just remember, me. your audience wants to know who you are as a person, yeah, and I that, know. and it's I not know. that it's taken away from who you are. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, and then there's the times that you do on, on your own. But the, your your audience, and that's where the your social media. Keep them posted on who you are and where you're going and right. what you're doing. Well, let, yeah, let, think actually, of it more. Let, let me talk about the, the whole Twitter thing and the social media. Um, p- part of, of the demographic of the people that have Twitter, that follow celebrities on Twitter, it's a younger crowd. I don't know that that's the crowd that buys tickets to sporting events. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. That's not my business. Kramer, um, what's younger crowd mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> My my yeah, kids my, my kids know about Twitter, so I mean yeah. it's uh, you know teenagers and and, their, and people in their twenties. Uh, be surprised. Forty-year-olds are more active on Twitter than teenagers. Okay, and, and exactly. Of our, of our thirty thousand listeners out there, yeah. I don't know how many of them are on. Twitter. Kramer doesn't have his Twitter account yet. <laughs> okay, watch well, this video, Kramer. But that's another show, the business experience show. Uh, we could do that with everybody. Um, uh, so yes, uh, you can follow David Rodriguez on Twitter. He's if you, your website is. Well, my website's Nino Boxing, and then Twitter I just opened up today, and that's uh, Nino Boxer at yes, Twitter. Yes, I know. We can be right? You did that for me. I did do that for you. And he, you know, he's humble enough to share that he doesn't have a Twitter yet, and that's going to change, and people are just going <laughs> to follow him. I mean, you're not going to be like the next-door neighbor that says, I have a Twitter, and oh, today I'm watering my flowers, and please, you know, follow me. Like, you're David Rodriguez. I never wanted to mess with it. I just didn't. I never. Most people don't. Mm-hmm. It's just. They I don't. swear. It's like every day. It's like something new. And I'm just like, man. Yeah. I just want to keep my stress levels low. Yeah. You know. And now it's like, no. You got to have this. You got to have a LinkedIn. You got to have a Twitter. So, you gotta so have a Facebook. keep keep your stress levels low. You get low. You get in the ring with guys that are right. six five, two hundred. Uh, you know, right. <laughs> oh, I'm stressless uh, now. Yeah. Okay. So as you see, I got a lot of stress. I don't want to listen. But yeah, man. I mean, yeah. Good point. Uh, you stumped me there. This way. <laughs> if, if you genuinely want to get into the social media network and start marketing yourself, link your Twitter to your Facebook. Yes, and you yes. Tweet, we did that today. On Facebook. <laughs> you uh, know, I mean, so, that's the easiest way. One time does it all. That's right. David, what is your most satisfactory victory? Oh, I think my first pro fight when I broke the ice, and then, but the the biggest one was knocking out Owen Beck because that was Don King's boy, and that was. Uh, I heard pop- you knocked him out for twenty minutes. Is yeah. that true? Yep, I sure did. And, and you know, let like me he tell was you, sleep like asleep, asleep for twenty minutes. Yeah, they brought him. He it- these days, but was he like asleep for twenty minutes? Yeah, yeah. He they had to bring yeah, him oxygen. I got and- see footage on that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we'll be putting that on your site soon. We, well, we... I wasn't. I'll be honest with you, man. I knelt. I knelt on one knee and prayed because I was really concerned for his health. I. It's not something. Yeah, you didn't know, of course. Of dude, course. I was really scared, man. I was like, oh, man, if I killed someone in the ring, dude, I would never box again. I just wouldn't have. I oh just, yeah, I you can't think like that, though. I mean, that's just always, you know, that's the no-no. That's just part of the you game. Talk about it is. You know, I know yeah. I'm risking going in there my, myself in jeopardy as well. I'm putting myself in harm's <laughs> way. And it's 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 a it's a jungle, man. It's it's yeah. it's there is no yeah. nice anything in boxing, man. I throw but elbows. But you can't I, tell me. But you can't tell me after he was okay and he woke up from the twenty minute sleep, you didn't high five people. He had a people. smile. I asked him, well, "You want to go get you a beer?" <laughs> <laughs> I was excited. I was elated because it was a huge victory, man. Because a lot of people were saying, "Oh, Rodriguez, he's fought some guy. He never fought a contender." And when I went in there and I knocked him out the way I did. It was a huge exclamation mark. It was a huge statement because, man, it was just like, I'm here. Does does nearly every fight end with someone in the hospital? No, they have a doctor that checks you at, at, when you get out of the ring. But, yeah, it's a, a lot of fights do. I mean, not like well, they, severe. They take it precautionary. Yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll do the precautionary, make sure you didn't break your neck. You know, of course, I think they do all that. But I got a, I got a quick question for you, David. What would you be doing if you weren't fighting? What would you be doing right now? What would be your second love outside of boxing 
Gosh, man, you know, when I grew up, I played all sports. I played baseball, football, basketball, all of it. And I just got in trouble in school so much and kicked out so much. <laughs> boxing was my, my saving grace. I had the only place I could go was a boxing gym. So I was always in trouble, you know, as a kid, uh, you know. And, and I heard you that, were bullied a lot as a kid. I was bullied and I, did, and I bullied people. So it was like I was always in trouble, man. I was, I was a bad kid, but boxing was my saving grace. Like the, the one place that left the doors open for me was a boxing gym. And strangely enough, a police officer, his name was Joe Sullivan, knew that I was always in trouble, and he saw my talent in the boxing ring, mm -hmm. and so he picked me up every day from school and took me to the boxing gym because he knew that was the only place I I wouldn't get in trouble. It was an outlet David, for you. David, talk about boxing for a minute. It, it's it's to the to the uninformed spectator, it looks like two guys that are just uh, out there punching each other uh, without any sort of plan. Oh. Uh, there's the there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it with footwork and strategy. Man, and it's just like if you look at ice skating or gymnastics or anything like that, they're always on point. Their technique, boxing is the same. Boxing, you have to have ex the technique. Everything is uh, it's 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 you're playing defense and offense at the exact same time. It's a high speed chess match, and and it's the per the, the game of least mistakes. You make a mistake, you're done. The game the the fight is over. It's a one punch yeah. can end the fight. You can be going 10, 11 rounds, and in the 12th round get caught with a punch, just like Chavez did with the sure, Taylor. I'm and sure it doesn't even have to be that hard of a punch, huh, David? It no, could be no, right on the button. It's you know, it's just it's called catching cold leather, man. You, you, it's a punch you don't see that gets you, and bop, it just has the right snap behind it, and then you know that's it, you're out. And that's what's dangerous, especially in heavyweights. A heavyweight can be sloppy mm -hmm. and have a lot of endurance and hit you on top of the head and knock you out. I mean, heavyweights is the most. The lighter weight divisions take a lot of beatings. They take a lot of punches. The, and you see a lot of the beautiful, sweet science and skill in the boxing. The heavyweights is, is the one punch home run. That's what people like to see. And, you know, like my favorite fighters like Holyfield and Tyson yeah. and yeah. those guys. To me, not even MMA comes close to that. I'm sorry. It does not come close to a Tyson fight when he was in his prime. That, to me, the whole world stopped to watch that guy fight. Yeah. The whole, you know, yeah, everyone but, loved but, watching him. But they, they watched. To, to just to watch him knock people out, right. uh, I'm not sure they the saw the tenacity. Uh, the uninformed spectator uh, right. doesn't doesn't see the skill, the strategy. It's sad. It's just it's it's, it's really quick. By the training. time you get your popcorn and you sit down, the fight's over already. Right. It's sad, but they don't understand that he trains every day, all day long, to be that good. Except when he went to well, Tokyo to fight Buster Douglas. Well, he had some problems. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it was a woman. You know, a lot of it was, you know, when you, you know, that's I would say your life has to be straight on both ends, man. You can't, if you're going to be doing right in the gym, you have to be doing right in your personal life. And a lot of fighters are self-destructive by nature. And when you get into a situation, when you have a fighter like Mike Tyson, who's just killing everybody, there's going to be a time when you're going to slack a little bit. And it's going to be against a guy that comes under the radar. That's the guy that's going to get you. And, you know, because you know to prepare for the tough guys. You'll do that. But when you think you're going to just walk right through a guy, they give you the toughest fight sometimes. And you wonder, how did a guy like Buster Douglas that nobody ever heard of, how did he get the shot? And why don't you get your shot now? Well, like I said, even now today, like the Klitschko's, they handpick everybody. I believe they're cashing out. You know, one's 30, I think 37, the other one's 41. 41, right. And these days, you know, let's be honest, heavyweights is a different era. It, they, blo they, they blossom later. They mature later. They're, you know, it's like breeds of dogs, like a Great Dane and a Chihuahua. They're two different kinds of breeds the of dogs. The last thing that goes the punch, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you always keep your punch. Um, they say this, first your reflexes, then your speed, then your friends. <laughs> <laughs>